Hey guys, welcome back to the second time Lucky Mining channel. In today's quick video, we are going to have a talk about my new proof of useful work test trick. If you like the proof of useful work content, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. That will help me out a great deal. But enough of shilling my channel, let's jump into the content. Now, in today's video, we are going to talk about my new proof of useful work test trick. I bought it about probably about a month ago, but actually it's been sitting in the box and I haven't unboxed it. I've been tied up playing Diablo 4 and leveling my Necromancer that I actually haven't had the interest yet for this specific rig. And the big reason as to why is there actually hasn't been anything that excites me necessarily about proof of useful work. If I look at the flux iteration, the benchmarks actually hasn't come out and that's why I want to start unboxing this and getting it ready because it is almost mining disrupt and that's when we're actually going to expect to see at least the benchmark for proof of useful work. So I'm excited specifically for that. But at least what we're going to have a look at today in today's video is just I'll unbox it and show you guys what I got, exactly what I paid for it, what is the plans and what is my expectations around proof of useful work. Now enough of the anticipation, let's go ahead with the unboxing. Okay, so I've managed to unbox it and this is actually what we have. Now, again, this is nothing special necessarily. This is just a second-hand computer that I bought off eBay. It, I paid about 750 Australian dollars, so that's about 500 US dollars. And actually what I got for it is if you specifically have a look at this, and I'll zoom in a little bit later to show you guys a little bit closer, but as you can see here, I've got an AIO. It looks like a 240 mil AIO. It is a Threadripper 1950X, so that's 16 cores, 32 threads. As you can see here, I've got two sticks of RAM, but it actually supports eight sticks of RAM. So it's quite a lot of support. This is a X399 platform, so this is first gen Threadripper. I can actually stick in, I think, at least I'll have a look at the BIOS, but I should be able to stick in a second gen Threadripper in here without an issue. Anyway, so this will give me a lot of cores. The biggest thing about first gen Threadripper or at least the platform here that I have is it's a lot of PCIe lanes and that's specifically what I wanted for proof of useful work. Now for the lanes, as I mentioned, it's PCIe Gen 3, so it's not Gen 4 or Gen 5, so it's actually two genes behind if you look at it like that, but as far as the specification goes for at least flux iteration, that should be fast enough. Now, again, it's got 64 PCIe Gen 3 lanes. Now, what that means technically is from the actual CPU, it's actually 60 lanes. So 60 lanes from there and then from the chipset, which is normally underneath here, um, there is four lanes. So that's sort of what I've got here. Now, the, again, the big thing about proof of use of work is the amount of lanes that you're going to need. So you would need at least times eight per GPU or at least to get the max maximum throughput throughout that. Now if you look at normal consumer grade hardware that's really where the restriction comes in with X570 or Z590, uh, 690, all those type of things. You are really limited in terms of PCIe lane. So that's sort of why I specifically went uh, for first gen trader but you get a lot of lanes um, and at least what I paid for this, it's not super expensive and it allows me to play around and test different configurations. Now, if I have a look at some of the other things that's in the system here, so this is a ugly 1050 Ti. Um, as far as the guy or the seller told me, at least the fan underneath here um, doesn't spin. So I do expect this is the first thing that is going to go. Um, some of the other components that's in here is he's got a um, gen or NVMe apparently there's another one here so I'm assuming that's underneath this specific heatsink so yes it does look like there's another NVMe so he's actually got two NVMe's a 500 gigabyte and I think this one is even smaller 128 gigabytes now what you would also see there's a SATA connection right here so there's a two terabyte H 
HHD or a hard drive underneath this bay here. So um, at least there's a two terabyte storage specifically for proof of useful work. Now, again, what the specifications has mentioned in terms of proof of useful work is that you would want a fast boot drive, uh, preferably NVMe, which this is going to have, and then a hard drive for lots of storage, uh, because whatever you're going to be rendering uh, needs to be saved on the drive. So um, again, it ticks those specific boxes. Um, I will make some other tweaks about it. I'll talk about it in a, in a second. Now, again, the other thing that is important here to have a look at is underneath here, and you can't really see it without me actually having to take it off, but there is a power supply, a thermal take power supply. Unfortunately, it's 650 watts. Now, um, again, that's one of the the things that I'll upgrade and that I'll talk about what I actually am going to upgrade. Now again, looking at cooling and in terms of space here, the other thing that you would notice is the amount of slots that I have for actual GPUs here. So as I can count, and what you will see is one, two, three, four, and five. So there's five slots in terms of PCIe. And if you look at the lane configuration, I don't think that um, I will use <laughs> all five. Uh, again, it won't fit here, so if you look at normal GPUs, it just wouldn't be able to fit five GPUs in this specific case. And what I suspect what I will be doing is, at least in the current setup within a case, I'll probably do max three GPUs within this case. What I actually am thinking about is taking all of these internals out and putting it specifically on a test bench. Okay, so this is now my new baby and what I'm going to play with, at least for proof of useful work for the foreseeable future and test different GPU configurations. Now, what am I going to do um, next specifically with this server or uh, proof of useful work rig is I'm actually just going to close it up and then power it on. Again, I bought it off eBay secondhand. It actually looks quite clean. It's not a lot of dust, but I just want to make sure that everything works in the standard configuration. Now, what this guy has got on here is actually, I think it's Windows 10. So I'll just boot it up, make sure everything works before I start hacking away at it. <laughs> Why am I doing that? Well, I just want to make sure that at least I didn't break or um, it didn't come broken before I started hacking away at it. Now, in terms of what are the things that I am going to do, the first thing is I'm gonna make a, a couple of changes specifically to the configuration that you would see in the system here. The first thing that I'm going to swap out is the power supply. 650 watts is just not going to cut it. Maybe with a um, 1050 Ti as the GPU, that was fine. Um, but specifically the GPUs that I want to test for proof of useful work, it's just not going to work. Um, what GPUs do I actually want to test with proof of useful work? So I've got a A4000 that I want to stick in there. The big thing is why 650 watts is, at least in my opinion, not good enough, is I at least want to put two GPUs within this actual rig. And as you can see here, there should be space for at least two big GPUs here. And um, in terms of the GPUs that I want to test and different test configurations, well, I'll make videos of all of that type of stuff, but um, I already have a A4000 that I just want to stick in here, 2080 Ti's, 3070's, um, and a 3060 Ti. Those are the typical things that I'm going to stick in here and see how it performs against the Flux benchmark and actually what configurations makes a difference. Um, if I stick in more RAM, does that make a difference? Uh, those type of things. So again, power supply is probably the first thing that's going to go. Looking at the next things is 32 gigs of RAM. So again, looking at the specifications that the Flux team actually put out is um, ideally they mentioned that you should have four times the GPU memory and that's the total GPU memory. So again, if I take a A4000 as an example that's got 16 gigs, I would at least need 64 gigs of RAM. Again, I'm going to test these different configurations and see if it actually makes a difference, but um, the next thing is I'm going to upgrade some RAM. So luckily I've got um, more uh, 32 gig sticks just laying around <laughs> that I, again I bought secondhand, so it should be easy for me to specifically upgrade that. Now some of the other stuff that I'm going to do is around the operating system. So I'll definitely take off Windows. Um, I'm not a massive fan of Windows. And again, I'll put in something Linux based just to learn another operating system. In my normal work environment, I just work in Windows. So it's actually nice to play around and test Linux from time to time with all of my 
pet projects here at home. Now, managing my own expectations for proof of useful work. The big thing here is, again, this is just a, a hobby and something for me to play with. I'm really excited for proof of useful work. I do think it's the next iteration of GPU mining, but it is going to be um, a little bit a while away. Now, again, the next thing that is going to come out that I'm looking forward to is at Mining Disrupt to see the actual Flux benchmarks, just to see where my hardware performs. And, and then again, to have a look at other content creators and other people that has got more different configurations. Again, this is new, again, in the mining space. We don't know exactly where is the sweet spot in terms of profitability, efficiency, so what setup is actually efficient. And that's sort of why I went with something like this. It didn't cost me too much money. It still cost me a, a lot of money, at least a GPU that I could have bought, uh, but it allows me to play around with different configurations. Now, again, in terms of expectations, there is no profitability, at least at this stage, around proof of use or work. Now, that when I'm saying that, it's not entirely true, at least from the Flux side, Flux doesn't even have a front end, at least that I have seen for customers. So um, I do think on the roadmap, at least the last that I've looked at, it's only coming quarter one, um, you know, next year. So I don't expect anything necessarily from the Flux team in terms of profitability and the typical stuff that a GPU miner looks at. So, um, you know, from expectation management point of view, this is only really to play with and uh, fiddle with some benchmarks to see, you know, what is good and what is not good. But hopefully next year we see more iterations. Now, again, Flux is not the only crypto project or project in town in terms of AI or proof of use or work, there is loads of other um, alternatives to consider. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, is I wanna have a look at Vast AI, I wanna have a look at Dynex. Now, Dynex doesn't need this necessarily, it's, it's slightly different, so it's quite interesting what Dynex is doing, but um, again, there is other projects, you don't just have to look at flux necessarily there's multiple other things that potentially that you could do with this but at least for me i'm super excited about testing out the new hardware and changing up the configuration and see actually what's going to be good in the proof of useful work mining space but that's it for this video guys if you've liked the video please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel if you didn't please specify what you would like me to change within the comment section otherwise i'll catch you in the next one cheers Thank you.